touchdown player of all time. When you ask that question to me, the question that comes to mind is, who is the first person that I would draft to start my franchise? There are 10 other players I will start and pick over Stephen Curry. Awesome. Welcome back to a live episode, and I do mean a live episode of It Is What It Is podcast. I'm your host, Cody Kelly. Look, I have an amazing topic tonight. We're going to talk NBA talk. Obviously, the NBA Finals has just ended, so I invited some amazing hosts in their own right to be on here and really unpack this. But before we begin, we have a word from our sponsors. There's a hero in all of us waiting to be unleashed. All it takes is just that one last push. Activate the hero within with CBMK Global Supplements. All natural, steroid free, designed to enhance performance, build muscle, and increase energy. You are unstoppable. You can do this. Become your own hero at www.cbmkglobal.store. Yes, become your own hero. <laughs> hero, best supplements on the market. www.cbmkglobal.store. Look, I brought one with me. We just released this. The no worries, the anti-anxiety formula. Get it today. www.cbmkglobal.store. So, NBA talk is real. I invited the best sports aficionados I know. Outside of CB, my man TJ Tyler Banks Jr., the Black Skip Bayless, Denzel Gullo, and the LeBron hater himself at Raj. With that being said, how you doing tonight, you fellas? What's up, guys? What's up? Doing here. well. Glad to be here, man. Can't wait to get into things. Cool, cool. And I see Raj. He's not in the uh, F-body Mustang. He is in, it looks like, the SUV. Yeah, I'm in Diamond truck right now. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Look, first question, I'm going to throw it to TJ. Steph, number four. Caught at the beginning of the playoffs. I said Steph is going to get his fourth ring today. He did it. Obviously, he beat uh, the Chris Taylor Celtics, which didn't seem like it was that hard. Uh, So, um, you know, so he wins the fourth. Now it's a question of legacy. In my opinion, Steph Curry with number four has cracked the top ten. Is he a top 10 all-time great? TJ, I'll begin with you. I believe that he is. Um, so I called at the beginning of the season. I thought it would be the Warriors versus the Bucks, but ended up being the Warriors versus the Celtics with the Warriors winning. I think he cemented his legacy. Some will argue that some of it has a lot to do with KD, but now KD has left and he has won without KD. Uh, Something that KD has yet to do without him. Uh, He's already the greatest shooter in history. He's changed the game in infinite amount of ways. I mean, you walk into any any gym now, you'll see people trying to pull up from Steph range or what I'm going to call Steph range, five feet beyond the three-point line. You'll see people taking shots that would normally be considered bad shots, but he's done such a good job of shooting from long distance that he's changed the way that basketball was played. Um, and that that goes into legacy. You cement yourself in this top 10 when you can do it as the driving force, which is something that he has done and proven this year. I think he had proven it before, but he solidified it this year for those who said he was never the driving force of any of his previous teams. He's won at the highest level. He's beat a healthy team and he's changed the game. What more are you looking for? That that's fair, and I like the take. I personally think Steph um, is this generation. I don't want to say this generation is Michael, but he has changed the game from a rules perspective, from a culture perspective. You can't really hate on the man. Uh, I think TJ, you have a fan out there. Well said, Mr. Banks. I'm convinced. <laughs> you know, like wife going the throwing the support. That that's amazing. Denzel, you are Denzel, you are the biggest Steph hater. Uh, on God's green earth, you are to Steph what Roger is to LeBron. Why isn't Steph a top 10 player? Why don't you give this man his respect? It is in no way, 
in the world, in the universe, that Stephen Curry is a top 10 um, player of all time. When you ask that question to me, the question that comes to mind is, who is the first person that will draft to start my franchise? There are 10 other players I will start and pick over Stephen Curry. First of all, due to controversy and through, you know, through the narrative that's been happening with Katie and Steph, I will choose Kevin Durant to take that 10 spot over Stephen Curry. People say that he was riding the bus. There's no way, no how that Kevin Durant was riding the bus. He uh, found us twice on Steph's team, 37, five, shooting 50% from the field. 40% 40% from three and over 90% from the free throw line and came up clutch in each playoff series. We've seen Steph they, in the second, um, and he would have won three finals MVP and done, done a three pity if he wasn't injured. When he became injured, he Steph Curry had himself, of course. He had Clay for like a game for most of the, most of the playoffs. Then he got injured. Then he had Draymond Green, and he couldn't get it done. The Celtics are fraudulent. They're not even a – they are a fraudulent contender. Jason Tatum, if you look at Jason Tatum's numbers, the closeout game, he scored 13 points. What is that? So when when Steph went against – when it wasn't with – when Steph got his rings, I'm going to wrap this up. When Steph got his rings, the first ring that he won in 2015, Astridge. He had he had Kevin Love injured. LeBron had Kevin Love injured and Kyrie Irving injured. And Ky- and, and they was up 2-1 against the se- against Golden State. So when both of your superstars, your supporting cast is down, that's when um Steph got his first ring. The next two rings, you know, once they lost, I mean once they won, um Okay, cool. But when they came back next year and went against LeBron with the healthy team, equal competition, they lost 73 and 19 because Steph isn't clutch when it's him driving the bus against equal competition. He lost. So they all got on the plane, recruited Kevin Durant, please, please join our team. We can't do it without you. And of course, they won two rings, Kevin Durant phenomenal and then he won this ring and he beat the celtics which was probably no not probably they were one of the worst teams in the east caught fire with a new coach but they're all young so he beat up on some babies great job steph i'd like to rebut a few points there go great for job, it steph. go for yeah, it man. all right so here's the thing you say steph has been unclutched throughout his career, right? That, that's the point that you're making. But in order to get to those finals where they lost to LeBron, they had to overcome a deficit against Kevin Durant and the Thunder. Yeah. And which okay. I would argue that if you're going to call Steph unclutch in those finals, how can you sit up here and not call Kevin Durant unclutch in the moment where he would have won his first ring? Okay, can I? Okay. That's a great point, but you're not. Before you, before you answer that, let me throw this in because I want to get Roger's perspective. Okay. Um, I want to think about the the staff, my, my pushback as far as saying that he's not dynamic. He is dynamic. He is a superstar in his own right. And now his playoff performances have been shaky, but historically superstars usually are not that consistent within the playoffs outside of Michael Jordan and relatively Kobe Bryant. And what I mean by that, Larry Bird, his first NBA Finals, he only averaged 13 points, closeout game, 13 points. That's why Cedric Maxwell became Finals MVP. Yet Bird is still considered, you know, the baddest Bostonian ever <laughs> and, and the top 10 player. My pushback with Steph is that, yes, situations matter. Yes, playoff matchups matter. However, and I hate to say this, in some aspects, he has dethroned LeBron. I'm not talking about totally took him off, you know, the kingdom. I'm not talking about totally eradicated his reign, but he has validity. And to say he's not a top 10 player because of the Iguodala finals, because of the KD, 
there's some there's some truth to that. KD is definitely a, a force to be reckoned with, but I want to get Rogers' time in here because I know he's itching to get in. Rogers, Steph Curry's legacy, where is he? You can't hear us? All right, he's jumping back in. So, does that finish your boy? So, Steph Curry's legacy. He's top comes- 15 of all time. To answer your question, I yeah. don't think he's top 10, but I don't want to be disrespectful. I just feel like I'm the most objective when it comes to Steph, honestly. So, I think he's top 15, but not top 10. Would Because I can't say that I would pick Steph over KD. There's no way, no how. And to, um, I guess that's the question too, but to rebut, to piggyback off what TJ said about the whole beating uh, KD in the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, they had nowhere near the talent of a holistic team that Golden State had. It was Russ. This came out of Kevin Durant's um, mouth. He said, quote, it's just me and who it's just me and Russ hooping out there. And him and Russ almost overcame a 73 and 19. Prime Katie and Prime Russ. Their next their next third star was um um Roberson. And he was shooting below 30% from the three. Steph, Draymond Green, all these are Hall of Famers. Come on, it's not even equal competition. Rogers, Steph Curry's legacy. Is he a top 10 player? Top 10. So I definitely understand the arguments for Steph being top 10. Uh, I understand the arguments for him not being top 10 as well. Um, I would say, in my opinion, that he's not quite top 10 to me. And if I had to make a list, I mean, he would be probably 11, 12. I mean, somewhere close to top 10. I just feel like... I'm still waiting on the end. If you look at the top 10 players, look at their total points, Steph's still pretty far down that list. Um, will Steph become a top 10 player? Absolutely. I'm just I'm not the type of person to put someone there um, when the hype is there, um, fresh off championships, fresh off of somebody, you know, everybody or Steph wowing us. So is he a top 10 player to me right now at the moment? No. Um, will he be when it's all said and done? Absolutely. I definitely think so. But I just feel like, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement of what's going on. It's easy to get caught up in um, Steph as a player. Uh, he's definitely one of the most exciting players you've ever seen, um, never touched the touch court. Um, he definitely has changed the game. Um, <laughs> whether he's changed the game for the good or the bad is up for debate. Um, I know everyone is not a favor of, uh, like TJ said, you can go to any gym right now. You can watch anybody, whether they're 35 years old or 12 years old. Everyone's trying to pull from 35 or 40 now. Um, but in my opinion right now, is he top 10? Not quite. Will he be when it's all said and done? I believe so. Did this championship, I guess for me, is, you know, I've been trying to become more objective when it comes to LeBron, even though I can't. And it's like virtually impossible because I'm a LeBron apologist. But I've been trying to really understand now what does this championship mean? Right. I mean, because four out of six in less than seven years. Right. And then I look at LeBron's and and it's crazy because you almost have to dissect LeBron's career into three phases. Right, because there's just so there's 19 plus years of it. I know you're a LeBron hater. Did this negatively, imp- or I should say, has this added fuel to your argument, Rod, as far as LeBron's status on Mount Rushmore? What's up? I'm super pumped. Just got done with another workout. It's your boy CMK33 connecting on Instagram and on the business page of CMK underscore global. You know how I get through it. You know how I get that pump look. <laughs> Best pre workout on the market. www.seasonkglobal.store. No, LeBron. So here, here's the thing. This is the argument that I always tell people because, again, I can be objective. So everyone knows that I'm a Kobe fanatic. Kobe all the way out. If I had to, if you told me, if I, am, I, am I taking Kobe over Mike? I'm, I'm taking Kobe. I don't care that Mike, quote unquote, is better. I'm taking Kobe. So, no, LeBron. So here's the thing LeBron is a Mount Rushmore player. I've never denied that. I know he's an all-world talent. He's a he's a one once in a lifetime type player. I just don't like the way LeBron went about the Miami situation. I, I've said this for years. He, I mean, anyone that needs a prima donna show about where you're going, we don't. Why are you doing this? LeBron changed literally from LeBron. I, I know there's arguments out there. So 
somebody be on this call right now about that saying that the Celtics big three was the one that kicked it off. And I disagree with that. I don't believe Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, and Paul Pierce at the age that they were at compared to LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. Personal opinion of mine. But it's the way he went about it. And if it was LeBron's way, he would have had Melo on that team as well in his prime. So I just feel like for LeBron being who he is and and uh, and all the, the talent and the IQ and, and the physical specimen that he is, I feel like the way that he changed the league, because after that, all you saw was literally uh, players and, and teams trying to put together a super team. And, as, and, and you can tell, like, now, thank God, it, it's, it's changed, but that wasn't good for the league. The league, think about how exciting the playoffs were when teams are competitive this year. It was a do- every series about was a dogfight. When we had super teams, it wasn't that. We just expect, we expected for, well, you know, with the Kevin Love and Kyrie and LeBron, we, we, knew, we ex- expected that. This year, we didn't really know. People, people made predictions, people made picks, but, like, it was an all-around competitive playoff series. So I just feel like if LeBron, I'm, I'm going to say this, and people will probably disagree. If LeBron stays in Cleveland, or even if he goes to Miami in a different type of way, let's just say he stays in scenario, he stays in Cleveland, right? Look, let's say LeBron gets, let's say he has one ring right now, right? But he has everything else, all the points, all the same stats. He has more respect for me from that than how he's gone about what he's done. Absolutely. He's a, even even his comments he's made, even his comments he's made about, oh, I love to play with the Warriors. That's weak to me. I want to see you compete. I want to see competitive. I don't want to see team up. So I want to see you guys compete. Steph competing? <laughs> I want to get TJ's thoughts on this. Hold on, hold on. How, how is Steph not competing? How I want to get The man, he put his whole team on a flight to beg KD. Like, and who, who, who made the, wait, wait. Who made, the, who made the decision to go, though? <laughs> Kevin Durant, right? He right. Should, hey, hey, you know what? You know what KD should have did? KD should have ran like Joseph ran. That's what he should have did. He no, Joseph so, ended up in jail. So he should have turned around. He should have went out, the other way. <laughs> versus someone actually going to the team. There's a difference. Was there? Hey, does so does Steph start a reality show? Basically, a whole ESPN segment about the about the plane ride over to recruit KD. No, Steph is a uh, passive aggressive. He would never do anything like that. Don't I don't want to see it. That's weak to me. People that smoke weed don't do that stuff. Weak to me. <laughs> nah. Wait, what did Cody say? I said people that smoke weed would do that stuff. KD smoke a lot. <laughs> and, and, and his thing too, like LeBron went to he went to Dwayne Wade's team. I mean, he went, yeah, but if LeBron, went, LeBron, LeBron went, went to he That's went to Dwayne LeBron. Wade's team. This I'm glad you brought that up. Who was the best player on the Miami Heat championship teams? LeBron. Dwayne Who was the Wade. best player on the Warriors team when KD was on there? You could argue Dwayne Wade versus LeBron James. Hey, hey, in those, those wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Who was about the to, best about to start player? Debate. Hold on. Who was the leader on those teams in Miami? Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Not even Wade close. was the leader on those teams. Dwayne Wade, all the way. Now, LeBron may have been the best player. Has and hold on, man, hold on. Let's, let's, wait, wait. Let's, let's, but let's not get it twisted. As great as LeBron was, Dwayne Wade was not shortstopping in those years at all. He was 2011, he was cold. 2011, he was cold. Thank you, name. Wade County. It was Wade phenomenal. County. So now, but you're not, you all are not answering the question, though. Wait, 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 wait. wait. No, could you just compare Steph Curry to Udonis Haslam? That's what we're not going to do. Who was the best play? I just simply asked the question. Who was the best player on the Miami Heat team? LeBron. LeBron LeBron James was the best best player. player Who was the leader? Dwayne Wade. Who was the the best player on the Golden State Warriors when Kevin Durant was there? Kevin Durant had the best numbers. The he same the numbers. It's, it's actually pretty much an apples to apples comparison. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. I know. We're, hold on, wait, wait. I know. I know we're quick. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait. I know we're quick to say LeBron was the best player on those Miami teams, but Dwayne Wade closed on them, closed those games out for them. But go ahead though. In 2012, it's about Indiana. 2012, Bro. he was an animated player. Bro. LeBron, I know I wasn't a LeBron. Come on, y'all know how I feel about LeBron. I'm skipped when it comes to LeBron. No, you, <laughs> not anymore. You used to be. Not anymore. No, that's a great point. Not anymore. You, yeah, no, was, LeBron has been. I know. I've, I've yeah, converted this all over. Anything. Because you know, I've been Kobe even before all y'all was Kobe. Hey, all you right. Know. So, right. So, in 2013, when they were playing the Spurs and they were about to lose before Ray Allen shot. LeBron scored like the last 12 points. He did. Yes, he, he did. did. But, yes, I don't, but I don't, I'm saying let's, 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 let's not against men. But let's not forget what Dwayne Wade meant to that team. 
No, 100%. I believe the way that. Wade meant to that team what Steph Curry means to the Warriors. Fair, fair, and, fair and point. Dirk was only Dirk was only better than Chris Bosh. It was just Dirk's time. That was bad. I admit that was a that was a gaffe. I I can't excuse the Mavericks. They LeBron just didn't show up that series. It's just Dirk was no one. He, he didn't show up, but hey, look, Kobe didn't show up in the Phoenix Suns um series when they went up three one. I mean, did, did, Kobe, did, Kobe, did Kobe have a look, have a Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh equal on his team? No, he didn't. But go ahead. Thank though. you, thank you. Anyway, let's Stop switch. That. Let's switch. 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 let is he? I'm Sorry, go ahead. I'm going to throw this to TJ. My <laughs> personal feeling is that Brooklyn needs to trade him. I don't care where, but him staying in Brooklyn is just ultimately, ultimately problematic. A proposed trade would be Kyrie to what, TJ? To what, the Lakers for Russ to get that uh, those <laughs> dynamic duos back together so that they can also go nowhere? Because <laughs> their their time is, is just – quickly evaporating. Um, and that's not for any disrespect towards them. It's just that if you think about it, kd has been in the league since what, 2007, I think he's been in the league 15 years. I wanted to give a little pushback to Rogers comment on Steph, not being that high up to on the point, all time points ladder. Um, I just did a little, a quick little research. And I mean, magic Johnson's not even like, 50 in scoring all time. Magic's Gary not a Bird. top player, but y'all know my lead though. Magic's not a top five player to me. I'll argue that all day, but go ahead. No, no, but you would have him in your top 10, right? I think most Maybe. people would have him in their top 10. Would you have Larry Bird in your top 10? I don't know. I got KD replacing Larry. All right, I'm going to have to see y'all top I'm, 10. My, my, Larry Bird my, sits 36 my players on the all-time scoring different. list. My top players are much different than most people. Most people pick out. I don't. I believe Magic on Mount Rushmore honestly is ridiculous. I'm telling you, my if your top five, top four guys are not two two way players, I don't want. I don't want to hear your list. But, but go I ahead, like, let me cut you off. I like that go point. Ahead. I like that point a lot. Okay. Well, if you were saying like that, the fact that they weren't that high up on the all time scoring list was a reason to not have them in the top ten. I'm like, well, Larry Bird sitting like 36 on the all time scoring list, but. One thing that we're also having to realize is that nowadays players or superstars are playing longer than they did in the 80s and the 90s. I mean, LeBron, right. I mean, I know LeBron is an anomaly, but he's in year going on year 20, 19, I, I something ridiculous that. like that. Katie, I just mentioned, is in year 15. It's still getting buckets. Yeah. Steph is in year about to enter year 13. Yeah. It's like these are when careers were ended a long time ago. But I think it's because, and this is where I come into this is where style I'm, of the game, the style old the game. game. Yes, Steph going shimmy and coming in the hole against Charles Oakley. Are you, are we serious? Like he's not doing these things against Stockton on a perimeter. If I'm able to hand check, he's not doing these things against Isaiah Thomas. He's not. But he is. Because if you watch his game, he runs around screens, and screens have been around. Reggie Miller ran around screens. Ray Allen ran around seven. screens. The he's great shooters seven. of he's the eighties and nineties all he's ran around screens, and, and he runs around five screens per possession. You're not. Here's the context of that. You're missing. You're missing three factors there. Steph is not six seven. Steph is not clutch, and Steph, and Steph hasn't led a franchise to the finals against Shaq and Mike. Without the caliber Clay and Draymond Green. Okay, so let's run down a list of people who have led okay. people to the finals without the caliber of a of a number two or a number three. What's your list of who of players who have who have ran down the the number ran down a team to a championship uh, without the without a second tier player without a second player two or a player three. Oh, Kobe. Kobe had beat um, the Celtics without uh, any top 75 players. Oh, so he ran up against a Mike and a Shaq. Because that's what you're telling me. No. You're, you're trying to compare, like, the 90s basketball dynasty, which is the Bulls, which you're fine to compare that to. But, I mean, who are you going to compare them to? And you wanted to talk about height. Honestly, the only reason that KD's in the conversation is because he's seven feet tall. Because if he was 6'3", he would just be a regular, regular star. <laughs> hey, 
It is what it is. I mean, if Steph Curry's seven feet tall. Some people can translate. No accommodations. <laughs> Curry need accommodations to be this great. If you're saying that he will be doing this exact same thing, I just want to know. If you believe it, I'm going to leave it alone. You really believe Steph will be doing the exact same thing in the 90s and early 2000s? Shooting, yes. Yes. Four rings. You you, you Four really rings, you gotta go you gotta go through Mike. Two finals MVPs. You really believe he'll have the stats and shooting like that. Like I can't touch him. So Russ, if if Russ, if Russ got all this athleticism, he you pretty much locking those hands up. No, the rules is gonna lock you up. It's like being a black man in Jim Crow laws. I can <laughs> that's <laughs> But this systemic oppression, I can't. It's the much oh, I want to be great. <laughs> I got this system and these rules. Russ is the most athletic point guard of all time. And if I can put in strength, if I can put strength and speed, I mean, get in your mug. You really think when you shoot, when Steph, Steph is shooting, when he shoot, everybody is in like he's shooting from State Street. Everybody at Hall State, like you, you just free. Can't touch him. Free space. I mean, like it's like man, it's a WNBA. Wait a minute. Speaking speaking of that, <laughs> speaking of that, the WNBA. Uh, first of all, they have a fantastic game. So <laughs> you know, before we start throwing, you're right. You're right. Uh, Sorry about that. Right, right. They have a fantastic game before you get you and me right. canceled. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know but but no, I, I actually long, do like. So. Yeah. We're actually going to switch to that topic uh, before my Wi-Fi decided to go crazy. WNBA salaries is the thing of debate, right? Um, this is the only professional sport where basically they have to play here and overseas to kind of accommodate and make up for what they're lacking. Hence, you know, now we have the Brittany Griner situation. Yeah. Why, why do you think the WNBA salaries are still at an all-time low? Do you think that there is justification for a raise in salary structure? I have a controversial statement toward that. I mean, answer to it that. So when we look at retail, okay, I'm just going to hold everybody accountable. Um, when we look at retail, who's the top consumer? The black woman. So we look at the WNBA, we look at the players in their race and ethnicity, people of color. Okay. So if you're not, if you're wanting to advocate for women, if you want to advocate for their salaries, I think you should set the example by pouring in your resources into that product and push it forward versus, you know, you, you guys like, or I'm like, well, you have the buying power, you have the influence, you lead the charge because who's leading the charge of the National Basketball Association? It's not women. Okay. But of course, women enjoy NBA basketball. I'm not taking away from um, anything of that nature. I just feel like there should be a level of accountability of interest, right? And um, finances. Like you pour into Mary Kay, you pour into Mac. You pour into um, Gucci bags and things of that nature, but there's a product in National Basketball Association, right? I mean, on women's um, WNBA, WNBA, Women's National Basketball Association, there's tickets, there's apparel, um, there's other products that you can support. And when you look at the statistics, I'm just looking at straight stacks, um, and, and I'm just looking at all the logistics of it all. They're not pouring their resources in that. I just don't understand why. Lead the charge so we can follow you. We want to be the allies. Roger, do you agree with Denzel? Lead the charge? Do you think that it's a lack of support from the demographic that uh, is pretty much on the court? Or do you think it's a little bit deeper than just a lack of support? I just think it's lack of support. Um, I think it's a lack of... Uh, I'll say this. So, if you're not an athlete and you go watch an NBA game, you are automatically wowed by some of the things that you may see, right? But if you've ever played basketball and you appreciate the actual game of basketball in every form without the, 
you know, the between the leg dunks and the alley oops and everything else. But if you actually appreciate the game of basketball, you'll actually enjoy WNBA. I've watched WNBA games, and the game that they play is actually phenomenal. Agreed. Um, so I think that I think unfortunately because there just is a difference in uh, the physical abilities between the NBA and the WNBA. I think that the lack of support is the issue. So what I think, um, and they and they're starting to do this more and more, but I think the NBA really should step in and try to do what they can to increase the uh, the support for the WNBA um, because I think that's really the only way. I think that they're really going to be able to draw uh, the crowds, the revenue. Um, that they can. Dizzo did make some good points about definitely support, you know, supporting um, in every aspect possible. Um, but I think the problem is, is that if you if you're not an athlete, if you've never played basketball, you never played the game. It's hard to go. It's hard to watch that game and to understand really how good they really are. Um, so I think it's just it's a support thing. Um, I, I want to see it get better support. They deserve way more money than they're getting paid. Um, anybody that again, anybody that's ever played a sport or, or had to do something, you know, year round and train for something and prepare for something, it's hard work. Those women, they they work hard to get where they're at, just like the men work hard to get where they're at. Mm-hmm. I think it's honestly a shame that they're not paid uh, much more. It, it's actually it's sad. And like you like and like you mentioned, leave with the grinder situation. Think about it. If grinder is making the money that she deserves to make over here, she's not in jail right now. Whew. Big facts. True. So. Yeah. Um, I, I, that's what I think. It's a support thing, and, and it's sad. I, I want to see it get better, and I think that's a part. And that's a part of why, even when I think about Kobe, um, and, you know, his daughter Gianna. You know, she was definitely pushing to get to that level. And I believe she would have got there, especially with the poor support of Kobe. And I think Kobe was going to. I believe with his support and how involved he was with her, I think his presence alone would have helped elevate the, the WBA game. But for reasons that we'll never understand, um, with them no longer being here. We'll, we'll never know. So I, I hope that um, I hope that the NBA continues to push for them um, that, so they can get the, the respect and, and, and the pay that they deserve. Awesome. TJ, last thoughts on this before I give you the final questions. WNBA, what does it need to do to get to the next level? Because it can't be a gender divide because if you look at women's track, we talk about Shakiri Richardson. I mean, she was the hottest story in the Olympics, right? We talk about the scandal with marijuana. We can talk about whatever. I know she just ran and won the 200 meters in the fishnet outfit, right? We talk about Serena Williams. I mean, they're getting compensated. Um, You know, I would argue and say that women's tennis is more popular than men's tennis. Uh, (laughs) You know, you think of Naomi Osaka, right? So what does the WNBA need to do? Um, It's a thing of getting sponsorships for revenue. Uh, There's a few things that tie into it. A lot of it is revenue driven. Um, Denzel touched on good points with the lack of support from the largest consumer basis in the U.S. And I'm not saying this as a as a as a shot at anyone, but of course, uh, when you support like and your dollar follows the support, it does eventually show up. Um, Raj made a good point of saying, hey, if Brittany Griner was making I'll say if she's making LeBron or Steph Curry money, ain't no way she's sitting in jail since what, February? Um, ain't no way she's even having to play overseas. If I'm not mistaken, the WNBA season's only about three months. So they get paid for those three months and then they do go to these other countries to get paid. And <clears throat> most of them actually make the bulk of their money overseas. overseas. Yep. Yep. Um, so I think it should at least mirror the money that they're making overseas, whether that, I mean, it's, it's the WNBA. There's money behind the National Basketball Association. Like there's millions of viewers, if not for the WNBA, definitely for the NBA. And that's being funneled throughout various versions and subsidiaries of the NBA, whether that's the Basketball Africa League, WNBA, the G League. Um, we got sponsorships for the G League, which was originally the Developmental League and is now the Gatorade League. So there's ways to get sponsorships for um various leagues and whether that involves like lengthening the season a little bit to cover the entire four or five months of the off season for the NBA so that basketball fans can have something year round where they're cheering for um, and giving them a little bit more money to incentivize them to stay 
here and maybe participate in training camps or have programs in the States as opposed to go off. I'm not sure, but uh, it is definitely a piece of getting more revenue coming from the WNBA. I think we're seeing it on uh, lesser on, on smaller levels, like the, the collegiate NIL, for example, uh, Paige Bukers is now sponsored by Gatorade uh, through PepsiCo. And so you're seeing more women get the opportunity to have endorsement deals. Um, and with endorsement deals comes more money and less of a need to leave. Uh, and that's what there needs to be more endorsement deals within the WNBA. I like it. like it. Look, guys, you guys have been amazing. I'm going to hit you with one question, one last question for each of you. We'll start with TJ. One minute uh, responses, please. Next season's predictions, finals pick, uh, MVP, and the most shocking thing you think that's going to happen next uh, season. I'll start with you, TJ. All right. Uh, finals pick, um, it's going to be the Warriors versus the Bucks. Uh, Bucks will be closing that one out in six. Greek Freak will get a second ring, second finals MVP. Um, and something that's shocking. Uh, Kyrie is going to leave KD high and dry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and KD will not win another ring. <laughs> Bulls all the way. Benjamin Mosley. Denzel, finals pick. And most shocking thing that's going to happen next season. You know it's not Miami, so do not say that. <laughs> I called it. I called Miami. I told y'all he's there was going crazy. Um, hmm. I was going to say Memphis Grizzlies going out the West, coming out the West. Um, but um, Kawhi is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Thirteen mm-hmm. is a real thing. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm really stuck on those two going to the finals in the West. Um, but in the East, who I come, who I have coming out the East, Miami. Wow. All right. Raj, finals pick. <laughs> I mean, you, said that, win. you said that last year and they kept on winning. They, I mean, it was, they yeah. Kept on, they kept on winning they on did. one leg, almost beat the Celtics. Jim, Jimmy Butler will not wield his team. He will not yield his team to a championship. I'm sorry. Uh, Rogers, finals pick and most likely thing that's going to happen next season. Finals pick. Um, I actually agree with, I agree with the Clippers take as well, as long as they stay healthy. Uh, I like the Clippers in the West. <laughs> um, East. The East is such a toss-up, man. Um, I think a healthy Bucks team is just really hard to deal with. I, I really do. The defense, the height, the length. Um, so I'm going Bucks Clippers. Um, something shocking. Zion plays a full season. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, oh, here's another one. And Lakers lose in the first round if they make the playoffs, and LeBron finally hangs it up. Sorry, tired, tired of him. Time to retire him. That was actually going to be my shocking. I have, and I'm I'm going down with the ship. I have LeBron going to one more finals versus the Bucks. Oh, <laughs> I have a seven game series. With Kyrie who? Irvin. With who? Kyrie I Irvin. Yeah. <laughs> I have Kyrie Irvin game winning three. I have LeBron getting a finals MVP. I have him hanging it up in five. And the most shocking thing next season um, is going to be you're going to be surprised. Kevin Durant is going to want to trade and he'll leave Brooklyn as well. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. No, Dre, yeah. I'm not logging off. You know, guys, what? it's been an amazing. <laughs> you got one more? Anything to say? <laughs> I was gonna say, where is he going to next? Going back to OKC, where it all started. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that one. Doc. <laughs> no, you know, you know, you want know something. To, last point. What's something to, to to stay watchful for is uh, see where Bradley Bill ends up see at the bank with that contract. Yeah, I mean, John Wall both. <laughs> no, but except for Bradley, Bradley can actually hoop though and stays healthy. So yeah. you I know love John Wall, but right now he's getting that Call of Duty money. He just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know Golden State is probably on the next flight going to see what KD is doing because no, they, man. you know what they you figure they won. Right. They you know, probably on the phone with Draymond right now. Before. They did that before. Memphis is, Memphis is coming though. Everybody's coming. 
Thank Memphis you. is coming. Memphis is coming. Memphis should have won, but that's another. I'm oh, sorry for. I that. honestly think the Timberwolves should have beat Memphis. Yeah, I, yeah, and and Timberwolves should have beat Memphis. I'm about to agree. Like, yeah, and they, they should have way better man. with Cat. With, with Cat, you know, you know, uh, I love you. Know, I knew the Timberwolves laws. Don't and, even entertain that. As soon as Cat had the interview, they asked Cat, "Hey, Cat, how do you bounce bounce back from this?" And he, you know, what he said, "He goes, you can go home, drink some wine." I said, "Yeah, y'all lost. Y'all going." <laughs> They and so he said, I said, yeah, the boys done. Point leads each game. Yeah. Anyway, we can yeah, get they, to they some folded. other stuff. But they folded. Yeah, big time. West is tough, man. The, 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 the West is tough. It definitely is, but we'll see what happens. Well, Kat, will Kawhi play the whole season, or will he play 40 games? It doesn't matter. He's still going to get, like, another ring. He did that before. Got two rings, two finals MVP. We know one person that didn't only has one finals MVP. So. Well, that person got four rings, so. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what? Katie Mike should Gordon, go your favorite player. Katie hey, should go to the Clippers. That's what you should do. If Katie well, goes to the Clippers, it's going to be unfair, yeah. but that'd be an amazing yeah. thing to watch. Yeah. Hey, so, so what happens so if what Katie goes to the Clippers and he's Kawhi super the soft? Oh, that's Kawhi good. The finals that's MVP. Do you do you feel differently about Katie at that point? If he, so you're saying he will win the finals MVP on his team. He's the best you said KD would. Absolutely, he's the best player. Like well, what happens if he doesn't, doesn't for whatever reason and Kawhi wins it? Well, that's not the case. That's like saying Steph win the uh, finals MVP with KD. Impossible. Well, I mean, he's got he's got a finals MVP. He's got four. <laughs> <laughs> KD. Dre, no, KD is not. KD, KD is, is not. Why? Yeah, KD. Why from um from this entire content. KD is not washed. I actually want to see KD back in the playoffs because I do miss him. Uh, I just miss the havoc that he causes. But I will have to say this. It is Steph Curry's league, and until somebody else takes it from him, it's 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 he's he's the face, man. Shout out to the light skin brother. With that being said, it has been an amazing episode of It Is What It Is podcast. Yo, subscribe to the YouTube channel at CV. That's Cody Vernon Kelly. It's not Greek Lee. Go to the website www.cvmkglobal.store where all amazing supplements are found. What superstar gets what? Cody said it's the it's his best league right now. Yes, I said it. It is Steph Curry's league. Uh, Bryant, Javon, Bryant, Doris. It is Steph Curry's league. Uh, tip the next light-skinned person that you see just to get <laughs> congratulations to him. With that being said, until next time, guys. Thanks. <laughs>